Mr Speaker, the member for South Staffordshire told a civil servant to slit their throat. How does the Prime Minister think the victim of that bullying felt when he expressed great sadness at his resignation? Mr Speaker, Mr Speaker, unequivocally the behaviour complained of was unacceptable and it is absolutely right, it is absolutely right that the right honourable gentleman has resigned. For the record, I did not know about any of the specific concerns relating to his conduct as Secretary of State or Chief Whip, which date back some years. I believe that people in public life should treat others with consideration and respect, and those are the principles that this government will stand by. Mr Speaker, the member for South Staffordshire spent years courting the idea he can intimidate others, blurring the lines to normalise bullying behaviour. It's precisely why the Prime Minister gave him a job. The truth is simple. He's a pathetic bully. But he would never get away with it if people like the Prime Minister didn't hand him power. So does he regret his decision to make him a government minister? Mr Speaker, I obviously regret appointing someone who has had to resign in these circumstances. But I think think what the British people would like to know is that when situations like this arise, that they will be dealt with properly. And that's why... And that's why it is absolutely right that he resigned, and it's why it is absolutely right that there is an investigation to look into these matters properly. I said my government would be characterised by integrity, professionalism and accountability, and it will. Mr Speaker, everyone in the country knows someone like the member for South Staffordshire. A sad middle manager getting off on intimidating those beneath him. But everyone in the country also knows someone like the Prime Minister. The boss who is so weak, so worried the bullies will turn on him, that he hides behind them. What message does he think it sends when, rather than take on the bullies, he lines up alongside them and thanks them for their loyalty? Mr Speaker, the message that I clearly want to send is that integrity in public life matters. And that is why... That is why it is right that the right honourable member has resigned. It is why it is right that there is a rigorous process to examine these issues. But as well as focusing on this one individual, it is also right and important that we keep delivering for the whole country. And that's why this government will continue to concentrate on stabilising the economy, on strengthening the NHS and on tackling illegal migration. Those are my priorities. Those are the priorities of the British people, and this government will deliver on them. Mr Speaker, the problem is he can't stand up to a run-of-the-mill bully. So he has no chance of standing up to vested interests on behalf of working people. Take Shell. They made record profits this year, £26 billion. How much have they paid under his so-called windfall tax? Mr Speaker, I was Chancellor who introduced an extra tax on the oil and gas companies. Right. But, but he talks, he talks, Mr Speaker, he talks about working people. The right honourable member voted against legislation to stop strikes disrupting working people. He voted, he voted against legislation to stop extremist protesters disrupting working people. That's because he's not on the side of working people, Mr Speaker. That's what the Conservatives are for. Mr Speaker, I'm I'm against all of those causing chaos, damage to our public services and to our economy, whether they are gluing themselves to the road or sitting on the government benches. Mr Speaker, there was no answer to the question because the answer is nothing. Shell haven't paid a penny in windfall tax. Why? Because for every pound they spend digging for fossil fuels, 
He hands them a 90p tax break, and it's costing the taxpayer billions. So will he find a backbone and end his absurd oil and gas giveaway? Well, Mr Speaker, what the party opposite will never understand is that it's businesses investing that create jobs in this country. We, Mr Speaker, we on this side of the House, we understand that. We will support businesses to invest, to create jobs, because that's how we create prosperity, that's how we support strong public services, and that's what you get with a Conservative government. There's only one party that crashed the economy, and they're all sitting there. It's a pattern, Mr Speaker, it's a pattern with this Prime Minister. Too weak to sack the security threat sat around the Cabinet table. Too weak to take part in a leadership contest after he lost the first one. Too weak to stand up for working people. He spent weeks flirting with the climate change deniers in his party, then scuttled off to COP at the last minute. In the Budget next week, He'll be too weak to end his oil and gas giveaway, scrap the non-DOM tax breaks, and end the farce of taxpayers subsidising private schools. That's what Labour would do, a proper plan for working people. Mr Speaker, if he can't even stand up to a cartoon bully with a pet spider, if he's too scared to face the public in an election, what chance has he got of running the country? We won't. Shh. We're going to try and get through on time, and I know some members want to catch my eye. They're not doing a good job so far. Come on, Prime Minister. M- Mr. Speaker, the Honourable Gentleman talks about judgment about putting people around the Cabinet table. I would just gently remind him he thought the member for Islington North was the right person to look after our security. But, Mr. Speaker, the, the Honourable Gentleman, the Honourable Gentleman, he's, he said a lot today. He said a lot today, but it's clear that he isn't focused on the serious issues that are confronting our country. We're strengthening our economy. He's backing the strikers. We're supporting people with energy bills. He's supporting the protesters. And we're tackling illegal migration. He's opposing every measure. The British people want real leadership on the serious global challenges we face, and that's what they'll get from this government.